A couple weeks ago, I released a build showcase for my Chaos Inoculation Cast on Crit Strike Forbidden Right Occultist. Since then, I've had quite a few questions about the build, so in today's video I'm going to go through and answer some of the most common ones. Now, even if you haven't played the Cast on Crit Strike Occultist, even if you have no interest in playing it, I'm going to also include some of the whys to my answers, and these things might help you with your own build, so do keep that in mind. Also, if you only have one specific question, you can jump to it with the chapters. Cast on Crit Strike builds are pretty complicated with a lot of moving parts, and my build especially so. I tried to clarify some of those in the preview video and in the build showcase itself, so hopefully this video adds some clarity both to a couple points that I overlooked in my original video as I thought it was things everyone knew, and also to things that people have maybe misunderstood a bit because they didn't watch all of the original video, but more on that in a bit. If you like mechanical discussions in Path of Exile, build showcases, money making tips, and crafting guides, be sure to sub to the channel and ring the bell. If this video answered any of the questions you had about my build or PoE mechanics in general, leave a like. And if you like playing other games, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, where I review and critique various games while talking about the state of gaming as a whole, like how much of a disaster NFTs are turning into for the gaming industry. The first question I got a lot, and by far the most common, is, I don't understand why my trigger rate is lower than it should be. I've tried adjusting my attack speed and my cooldown recovery rate, and that doesn't seem to help. In each case I've seen so far, this is because someone's Cyclone is lacking 100% critical strike chance and in some cases I've seen as low as 50%. Many people have been optimizing their adjustments in POB while looking at how that changes the damage for Forbidden Right. So they'll get to 100% spell critical strike chance, and forget that cast on crit strike only triggers when you deal a crit strike with a melee attack, which means it's far more important to have 100% crit chance on your Cyclone than it is to have 100% crit chance on the Forbidden Right skill itself. This means your two biggest goals in early gearing should be to get 100% accuracy, which in my build is solved by using the Vagans mod, Hits Can't Be Evaded, in addition to getting a 100% critical strike chance on the Cyclone, which I'm doing by a combination of local crit on the weapon and weapon enchantment, some local crit on my chest piece, Divergent Assassin's Mark, a Diamond Flask, and Cluster Jewels. Power Charges also provide a good bit of generic crit, so if you find yourself lacking in any way, I'd start with a weapon enchant as that's the cheapest and easiest solution. I'd also add Divergent Assassin's Mark as that wasn't too expensive, at least when I did the build. And from there, I'd look into Cluster Jewels, since generic crit clusters will scale the damage of both the Forbidden Right itself and also the Trigger Rate via scaling the crit of your Cyclone. The second question I've got a lot is, how do you have enough mana to trigger Forbidden Right without being locked out? There's a lot of ways to solve this, and I solve it slightly differently between my own character and the two less geared POBs. This is because I have access to a Mageblood, and I'm accounting for people not having that in the other two. In my own variant, I effectively reduce the mana cost of Forbidden Right to zero. This is done by using Replica Conqueror's Efficiency for minus 9, two Ring Crafts for a total of minus 14, a Boot Enchantment for 18% reduced if I've been hit recently, remember Forbidden Right hits you even if you're CI, so you've always been hit recently, and 45% reduced mana cost of skills during a Flask Effect, which is always active because I have a Mageblood. On the other hand, if you won't have 100% uptime on an Enkindled Flask, you need to make up for the mana cost another way, which is why in the less geared POBs I'm using a Gemini Claw for mana gain on hit. This means you need to get the mana cost down to 14 to 16, and when your Cyclone hits an enemy, it'll restore enough mana to pay for the Forbidden Right that it triggers. If you're ever struggling for mana due to gearing, you can always throw an Enduring Mana Flask with 25% reduced cost of skills during Flask Effect on. You'll have nearly 100% uptime, and this should resolve any issues. Enduring Mana Flasks maintain their effect even after you reach full mana, and Mana Flasks in general have a low cost charge-wise, so you can keep them up even during extended fights. If you're wondering where to get for reduced mana cost of skills during Flask Effect Craft, it can be found by unveiling Cinder Swallow Urn, which is obtained from Katarina. The third question I've gotten quite a bit is alternative gearing. Specifically, what other chess pieces can you use in place of Skin of a Lord's, Skin of a Loyal, or Grasping Mail? If we're talking about uniques, two immediately come to mind. First is Brass Dome, which you might not immediately assume is a good idea for an Energy Shield build, as this will leave your ES total much lower than it otherwise would be. What you're trading that ES for, though, is complete immunity to crits, and crits are very likely to kill you, a massive amount of armor, which means you will take a significantly lower amount of physical damage, and Max Res, which means you'll take a significantly lower amount of elemental damage. So even though you have less ES, 
Your ES is lost more slowly when you take damage, thus balancing things out. The only downside here is it costs a lot of strength, and you'll have to work that into your build. On the other hand, you could use the Incandescent Heart. It's effectively 25% less elemental damage taken, and provides a good mix of armor and energy shield, especially if you can find one that's crangled for plus ES. Of course, you could also use a rare of an influence mod if that's more your style. Some examples of influence mods that you'd want would be Hunter for attack crit or spell crit, less physical damage taken via Hunter for physical taken as chaos. Remember, if you're immune to chaos damage, that's essentially a less damage modifier. Crusader for consecrated ground is okay, but it kind of has to be elevated. If you spin in place, you will generate consecrated ground, and the effect will linger as you move. Or you could just go for a nice simple power charge on crit. A redeemer chest for frenzy charge on hit and dropping the militant faith could work pretty well, but I don't think is optimal. So instead, if you're going to use redeemer chest, I'd go for increased effective non-curse auras from your skills on you. On the other hand, you could save yourself a cluster jewel and use the warlord suffix gain an endurance charge every second if you've been hit recently. Remember, forbidden right does hit you every second, or more likely about five to ten times a second. For prefixes, you want armor and energy shield, or pure energy shield. If you're going pure energy shield, go for a Val regalia, but remember this is going to come with a cost of a lot of armor. This will make you squish your fizz damage and lower your overall recovery. On the other hand, a saintly chainmail will be harder to roll, but does provide the best mix of armor and energy shield. Many of these influence mods and the consideration of hybrid armor types do apply to other builds as well, and the two uniques are also good for a variety of builds, so keep them in mind. Fourth, I've gotten the question, why is my damage lower than yours, everything seems identical, or why is your ES lower than yours, I'm wearing the same gear? Usually this is someone who's talking about a character that's level 80 to 85, whereas my character and the accompanying POBs are made for 95 plus characters. 10 to 15 character levels, and using level 17 gems as opposed to level 21 gems, will make a huge difference in the total performance of a character. As you level up, most of these problems will fix themselves, or you can consider jumpstarting the process by purchasing some level 21 gems. One of the biggest gaps I've seen is when someone's missing all cluster jewels due to being underleveled and they're missing a significant source of crit strike chance for their cyclone. The best thing you can do in this case is run increased crit strike support in your main links. Your crit's still going to be a little hit or miss, but it's better than nothing. Fifth, can it be played without a mage blood, and how much does it cost to get the gear together? Well, I answered that first one in the video, and in two out of the three POBs, there's no mage blood. So I'd again like to remind people to watch the entire video, as it will often contain the answer to your question. As for how much does the build cost, this is a much more complicated topic. I never put prices on my builds or on specific gear, unless it's something that can be recreated for a fixed cost via either specific crafts or by the crafting bench. So I can easily say, you'll be able to put hits can't be evaded on any weapon with an open prefix for three exalts. But I won't say that, oh yeah, this chest piece only cost me around 9x. Most of the time, when a guide assures you of a price, that price is only valid at the time of publishing. Or worse yet, it's sometimes being used to trick you into believing the guide deserves some form of legitimacy it has no right to earn, simply because of a word cheap or budget in the title. I released my video around two weeks ago now. I have no idea what prices might be today. But if you're ever curious on how much it'll cost to play a build, be it mine or someone else's, there's an easy way to find out. Take a POB from the build guide for build showcase, or even take a character you found on Pee Wee Ninja, and start looking up various items and price checking them. How much does a plus one power charge enchanted crown of the inward eye cost? How much does it cost in TFT to get someone to enchant your plus one power charge crown of the inward eye? What about 200 ES gloves? How much does it cost for a ring with ES attributes and despair on hit? The best way to get accurate information on how much a build will cost is to price check it yourself. Because one thing I can guarantee when it comes to pricing is it costs a different amount today than when I did my video, and it'll have a completely different price three weeks or three months from now. I can give estimates, I can say the basic gear might be 20 to 40x, the min max gear is 40 to 100x, and my gear is about two mirrors. But that's all they are, estimates. Someone could easily reply, but I made your basic version for 7x, and in that same day, someone else could say, but I had to spend 200x just to get the min max gear, and as a result, I ran out of money and fell short on stats that I needed for a couple of pieces. Prices are always changing so it's best to check for yourself before you start buying gear, or maybe even before you decide to play a build. Finally, I've gotten a few questions on how the build deals with ailments and damage over time. Chill, Freeze, and Ignite are dealt with via Soul of a Brine King and Soul of Aberath. 
Shock via Tempest Shield, and Corrupted Blood via Corruption on one of my clusters. This leaves Cold Damage over time, which you should have time to move out of due to having 80% Cold Res, but if you're doing Deep Delve, I would be careful as the Cold Snaps from the Wettas can melt you. I deal with Regular Bleed primarily via Energy Shield on hit from my Watcher's Eye. If you don't have the Watcher's Eye, Evolved Discipline can let you recharge through the Bleed. Alternatively, if you feel comfortable with your defenses and feel comfortable dropping Molten Shell, you could use a Steel Skin. The biggest danger from bleeding comes when you're running a vulnerability map and you're not paying too much attention, so feel free to skip this mod if you run into deaths consistently. You could also use a Sulfur Flask for Consecrated Ground and simply regen through the damage and pair that with a reduced effect of curses on you during Flask Effect suffix on the Sulfur Flask to be curse immune while it's up and while you're standing in the Consecrated Ground. Hopefully this video answered some of your questions about my Chaos Inoculation, Cast on Crit Strike Forbidden Right Occultist, or gave you some insight into how to solve problems you might encounter with your own build. I'd love to hear which explanation was most helpful to you down in the comments below. If all else fails, remember, guides are only guidelines. Take the ideas, look at why something's being done, and don't just blindly copy it. Guides, and especially build showcases, aren't a shopping list. They're not there to tell you do this and only this, this is the only correct thing you can do. They're there to give you ideas that you can learn from and adapt for yourself. Thank you for watching. And again, a special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. If you want to support me, you can do so by clicking the links down in the description below or on screen right now. You can also support by making purchases through my Nexus page. Or if you just want to chill and hang out, be sure to join the Discord. Again, links for everything are down in the description below. Thank you and have a great day.